So continuing with the classic princess line, which goes into the armhole, we're now going to talk about the back panel, how you will create this same line that would transfer to the back panel. Now, a couple of things here. As a designer, the goal is balance in your garment. So ideally, you want to make sure that you're using the same point on the shoulder, both on the front and the back so that they hang together. So, uh, for example, here we marked our shoulder slope on our front bodice at our midpoint shoulder, and that's what we used. Um, you want to make sure you're transferring that same midpoint shoulder mark or style line to the back so that when you are use, generating your back princess line, they are going to line up so that the front and the back are going to have the same style line when you put the two necklines together. So this is super, super important about creating a balanced design um, because Really, where you place the style line is completely up to you. It can be closer to the neck. It can be closer to the shoulder. It's a design detail. For the purpose of this example, we're doing it at the midpoint shoulder. But the goal of what you need to remember is make sure you're always walking your pattern pieces together, joining the neckline, and transferring the style line detail from the front to the back so that they match. So we're, uh, we're still continuing with chapter six, page 122, 123, 124, 125. And what we're doing here is we're going to be taking our back bodice now and creating it into the two panel pieces, similar to what we just did with the front. So as always, you want to first establish your grain line, and then we're going to trace off our sloper neckline, shoulder, armhole, armhole notches. Remember there are two on the back, side seam and waist dart. Make sure you mark your apex and where your style line is going to be. Now, the same way that we treated the front, we're going to treat the back. So we're going to need to draft our style line to our first dart leg. So note it um, and still accommodating that ease. Re same issue that we have with the front, we're gonna have with the back panel. You do have shoulder blades here that we need to accommodate for. So we're gonna mark, just like we did with the front, lowering the true apex of that dart two inches of ease. So above, and below, so on each dart leg, so aligning the center of your graph ruler with each dart leg, you're gonna mark two inches down from that true apex. Then remembering the rule from our previous example, we need stability in our garment. So we are marking three inches up from the bottom hem to note this is, um, as far as styling and blending, that's as low as we need to go. We need to maintain that stability of that piece. So now when we go to draft our style line off of this dart leg, we know that we will need to also blend that panel just like we did to the front when we split these off. If you're cutting your front, on the fold, you need a closure in this garment. It could be a side seam zipper. It could be a center back zipper. So for the purposes of this exercise, we are gonna add an inch off of the center back to accommodate a zipper. So the way that you would do that then is we need to add a one inch seam allowance off of the center back you will make sure you notch your center back seam and you're gonna need to mark your grain line on the center back. Then, as always, we will transfer our notches into the seam allowance, a half inch on each side seam, one inch on the hem, one inch now on the center back to allow for that zipper, a quarter inch at the neck, a half inch at the shoulder seam, Labeling. 
the gray line for this one, we're, for the side back panel, we're going to transfer from our center back by, again, copying that using your gray, your graph ruler. We want to make sure that we're noting that the side back panel you need to cut to and that this back panel we also need to cut to because we need to make sure we're putting in our zip 